Hello girl. Right. Been a productive week and uh, I didn't realise it was Easter Sunday this weekend so I'm busy again on Sunday so I can't do the live tutorial. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's, yeah, that's kind of how I live. I had no idea. My parents are not happy with me about that. I've forgotten it was Easter. Um, so, what I'm going to do is this. Um, show you a sort of development. You, I mean, if you follow me on social media, you'll recognise a couple of these pictures I'm about to show you. Um, can't remember what I called them. Never can, to be honest with you. I do a lot of work and it's difficult for me to remember the um, the titles, one from another. They all sort of become a bit of a blur, really. Um, suffice to say, I am going to be working from the same portrait that sits... The, the line drawing that sits under this and it, it, it's a lot more sort of a cohesive and not abstracted as, as this one. Um, this was the biplate thing where I split the image in two, two from, a, from the gel plate. I get two prints, one residual print left on the gel plate and one comes off in the paper. And there's been a development in that. So obviously I show, I've been showing you that for best part of a couple of weeks now and that's another version it's upside down and I've left the blue tack on it something like that um <clears throat> of the same portrait as the previous one that you were just looking at in fact they are all the same portrait line drawing for uh, this one uh, and you can see a little bit of the development here you might even notice behind that there's another one with a lot of lines all over it that's the same development but I'm going to let you see that in full in a minute and that is working back into the image that I leave residual on the plate because obviously it's still there's nothing to stop me well so we get to this one so yeah the, the, the purple and the violets are where that's from the residual image that's left on the plate because obviously I can work another colour and other paints back into it not that you can't do that with what you pull away which is what this is the pen drawing I used and it was nine different versions of the line drawing moving across it because I wanted background movement but nothing too bold to interfere with the colours going on in the biprint and uh, I think it's successful I'm really pleased with that one literally if you stare at it for long enough it does a lot of moving and really messes with your eyes which I know for a lot of people is not something that they're particularly um I don't know, they're not looking for that, but I am. So, there you go. I'm the one making them. Um, so, right, now we get down to what I'm going to do. So, what I've got on the other side of this piece of paper is the residual print that's obviously left from here. What hasn't pulled up from the print face. Um, I'm not going to do the drawing bit that uh, is evident in the, in the previous like it is in this one that's the same portrait uh, and the reason I'm not going to do that is purely through time constraints that took hours to do as you would probably expect um, and yeah I just I haven't I'm trying to find time for editing and things I've just got so many projects and things to work on it's a it's a nightmare getting any time at the moment so they're all very sort of ad lib you get what you see kind of thing. Uh, anyway, that's my own problems. What I should be able to do, so underneath here is what's left. Now that's that. And I don't know how much of this you're actually going to be able to see because of the lighting and the perspective element that is. But you, there you go. You get some sort of idea. It's mostly the mouse left there. You've got quite a bit of the, what is the left eye. No, it's on the right side of the face. But if you were that person, that's your left eye. Um, and lots of information has got said. What I'm going to do is print another version of the line drawing into that. Dry it off. One take a few seconds. And then do some paint and repaint it, but in deliberately... Uh, how do 
I put it, contextual colours. And I'm not. Gonna, I'm trying not to repeat the colour sequencing that I've used to establish this image. I, I want to highlight, or not really highlight, but accentuate as to to quite a high degree the difference in the colour and probably the mark making because it's unlikely that the mark making is going to be the same because it's so organic on on the gel plate. Okay, so I'll get started. Obviously, most of this is achievable because I've got this rudimentary register, so I know where the paper falls each time it goes in and takes a print from the line drawing that I use as the basis for the image making. Now, bear with me a moment. It's going to go quiet for a sec while I go and get my line drawing. things like that but there's enough there for I'm hoping mm. <laughs> stop and start again if there isn't right well no I won't get much chance um, what I will do is just do it in a different it will drastically shorten the length of this video if this doesn't work so might be to your advantage caught up with less of my commentary Okay, so try to remember that I don't want too much again, because all once again, what I'm doing is taking like an embossed kind of image here. So I'm going to roll this out now in a minute. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want it to lift out what's already been achieved in the residual print. I want that. It's important context for me. Even though this will print wherever I should do. I've done the templates. Okay, I've got that. Right, so I'll put that down. Okay, that will be the way up just nearly. It's going to make a big difference. That is, it shouldn't have been so too long. Right, okay, I think we're good there. I think so. I, think I can go with that. Let's have a look at it up that way. Oh yeah, that's pretty damn good actually. I'm really happy with that. Okay, right. I'm gonna dry it off quickly. It's not a lot of information on there in terms of paint anyway. So, but pretty quick process. So I'm not going to switch the mic off. Sorry. A word, quick word on the hair drawing. Um, it's been brought to. I didn't. Not really one for reading instructions. You might tell that from these tutorials, but um. I didn't know that jelly with that, and this is a jelly plate, advise you not to heat the plate. I'm not going to advise you to do that. That's up to you what you do with your plate. What I will say is that I've been doing this to this plate for in excess of two years now. And thus far, I don't want to tempt fate with it. It's been pretty good. My take on it is, is I don't, I haven't got that, you'd have probably heard there with a the hairdryer on. Um, I haven't got it at full, full pelt for a start, and I rarely do. Especially now electric's going to cost what it's going to cost. Um, bit of politics. And I don't stay, I try not to focus on one area at a time. And I also think that Jelly manufactured it. This is a worldwide product. They sell it out all over the world. 
there's all sorts of warmer climes than here and they, I, I don't know, are, they, are people having problems with gel plates in places like Italy where they, I don't know, has that been the case? Has that turned up? I've not, not that I've done any research on it, but are the temperatures in with places with quite high ambient temperatures reporting any incidents with, with gel plates where they're not functioning very well? Either way, I'm going to carry on. You do what you want. That's what I do. It's only a job, like. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it makes the videos better, anyway. <laughs> and it also means that somebody can put a mute, even if it's me putting a mute on me. Um, right, so I'll get back to the painting. So I'm using blues. That was, I think, what was that? That was processed cyan. So, pretty standard colour, one of the primaries. Um, and the reason that I'm using that, even though blue is the background of the of the original image that I've split into two, I'm going to use much colder colour because the original image is quite warm, earthy colours. So, I'm going to work on the highlight of the nose now. Use a, this is, um, Wedgwood, and I said it was Jeremy Wedgwood. It's just Sire Wedgwood. Can't believe I was getting that wrong in a previous video. Not my cup of tea, but horses and courses and all that stuff. Right, so yeah, this on the other painting is a Naples yellow. So Hopefully when they're put in context to one another, which isn't going to be the context that you see them here anyway, they'll, um, they'll play against each other, but we shall see. So I'm sort of working in reverse order here to um, establish the highlights first. And that's what I did with the other one, but much warmer colours. And what I'm going to do with the, um, the bandana because that was, I, I went for a, like a, a mix of purples, mauves and, and blues and uh, magentas and things. So I'm going to probably go for some pale greens. I'm quite fond of this colour anyway, so I'll bung a bit of that in there. May me, need me doing this on occasion. I probably need to go for an eye test. Not doing it none. sort of leap across where well, there's a few warm grey which I'll probably use as a not as a binder colour but as a background colour to sort of hopefully equalise I use that quite a bit to equalise the um 
what I've put down, like it's the final layer and I might do a roller layer, binder layer after, especially with this where I'm, but I like what the, the grey does in order to, works great as a middle tone, but you have to put the middle tone on last, because it's all, as we say over here, arse about face. <laughs> It is for me anyway. I mean, I'm sure printmakers are much more used to working like that than I am. I'm, I'm used to working in the opposite direction. And I'm used to doing that a bit with imagery anyway, trying to imagine things and how they look the other way round. Pointless waste of my memory, some would say. <laughs> Right, probably going to need a bit of hair dryer treatment this, so I'll have a quick look at it. It's difficult to tell, obviously. It's not much. I'm not seeing much more than you are when I turn these over. So if you can't see much, trust me, neither can I. We're both in the same boat on that one. Okie cokey. Right, there's more of the line image. Sorry, I'm gonna to have to do that because I just can't see. Maybe I'm assisting you a bit here, I don't know. That's better. Okay. Gives me a better bearing on Okay, I think purples are gonna be the solution to that. Right, sorry about this, I switched the mic off. I will put it back on, I promise. Okay, back with sound, sorry about that. Right, so what I think I've got to do is probably get those uh, minuscule details with my brush, it's there, um, of the eyes and nostril. I'm just going to knock them back with uh, a bit of paint spray, substitute black as it were.
playing that bit loose, I'll tell you now. It's really hard to see what's going on in there. I don't think the print's come across too well in that area. <laughs> Fortunately, it has in that bit quite a bit, so it gives me a bit to play with. I'm just going to do that nostril again. Sorry about that. Twenty minutes in, twenty one minutes in. That's probably it with paint grey. Um right. Great colour dries out so quickly. Well, most of the dark colours do, don't they? something I'm going to do, be doing a lot more exploratory work in but it's an interesting way of manipulating the print further thanks for all the response I've had a lot of response of quite a few printmakers this week about that by plate uh, Kintsugi however you pronounce it I know I'm getting it wrong um, sort of uh, by plate thing that I've uh, I don't know I don't want to take credit for it it's uh, yeah it's just a fortuitous thing really that happened and having the penetrates in the background of my um, visual imagination really came to to the fore because it gave me something to to extrapolate that mistake further into a really successful oh, I'm really pleased with it series of Print them, sorry, not that. Okay. So that was, yeah, that was velvet purple. It's quite appropriate. Now, it dries quite dark, but it is quite a velvety colour. And this is phthalo blue, which is going to look good on the, uh, on the subtitles. <laughs> Apologies about the accent. I'm, I'm trying to be as clear as possible, but yeah, I've got an estuary accent that really, I don't know, I'm not compared to my friends who, well, it's a southeast accent. I don't even live in the southeast anymore, and I haven't done for the majority of my life, but. I remember doing, here we go, I'm going to give you a bit of life story stuff here. I remember in the second year of infant school, and I was down in my hometown, down in uh, Essex of Rayleigh, we did a project in Mrs. Huffer's class. The project was about accents and why you should actually be proud of the accent and where you came from. And that has always stuck with me but it is a comical accent so but it's not cockney so get it right <laughs> that's what all my friends from this area think i sound like <laughs> and bristol and up north when I first moved to the Welsh area, people thought I was Australian. Yeah. No comment. 
<laughs> especially in this accent. <laughs> Very foul this, that has. Right, yeah, I know what to do next. I know exactly what to do next. Sorry about the reflection. Okay, I'm gonna have a swig of coffee in a moment to myself. When I get a hold of some decent editing stuff, I'm gonna put Tony Hart's gallery thing up. So you can listen to that <laughs> while I drink my coffee and you have these brief visual moments without me commenting over the top of it. That's your rest from that. Tough. Back at it now. Right. So I'm thinking, and this will definitely, like I said, this will be a continuity colour because there's a lot of this in the previous image. The establishing image. It's the pale violet again. So, ooh, that's just made me think of something. Yeah. Mmm. thinking instead of using the power violet do I use quite a strong yellow I know what I'm going to do I'm going to shut the mic off and dry this off a bit and then I'll explain what I'm going to do Okay, this is about to go over into part two, into a second half hour. I think I'm probably going to get this done with inside the hour, no problem. So, it'd be great if you uh, follow it through to, to part two. Um, if you don't, thanks for watching uh, thus far. And uh, if you think it's worth it, give us a like or a subscribe or whatever's appropriate. Uh, in terms of the platform that you're watching me on and uh, yeah any questions drop us a line if you've been somebody who's been um, yeah follow well following me on uh, other channels with just the still images and chatting I, I much appreciate that there's all sorts of ideas coming in now from which was th the whole point with uh, showing you how I uh, achieve some of the visual tricks that I do so I'm I'm really pleased about doing that. A lot of people have questioned me doing that, giving away my secrets, but I'm not giving them all away. Anyway, see you in part two. Thanks a lot.